Sometimes you'll be asked to find the average rate of change given nothing but an equation uh, or a function like this one right here, uh, polynomial, or if you're unlucky, uh, this fraction equation down here. And there's nothing new to this. We're still going to use the slope equation, uh, rise over run, to figure out the average rate of change. But you have to be careful in keeping track of all the numbers. That's, that's really what it comes down to. So let's talk about rise over run. Right? This is, uh, remember, m equals change in y over change in x. And that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what are x2 and x1? Let's start there. Well, if you look at this statement, this math statement here, it says x is a member of the interval going from negative 4 to 5. That means the smallest x is is negative 4, the biggest is 5, and it wants to know the average rate of change on that interval, which means x1 equals negative 4, and x2 equals 5. Well, that wasn't so bad. Now let's figure out the y values, y2 and y1. And for this, this is where you really have to take things slowly, one step at a time. It's nothing but basic algebra. I mean basic algebra. Uh, so just don't try to be a hero and do this in your head, or you will mess up. Uh, so negative 4 squared minus 5. See, I'm just plugging these into my equation for y up here. Okay, plug those numbers right in. Minus 3. Okay, so that's going to be equal to, uh, well, negative 2. Okay, I'm going to be a hero and try to do this in my head because I don't want to waste space. Uh, but don't do this. 16. High chance I'm going to make a mistake here, and then I'll have to make a new video. Uh, plus 20 minus 3 equals negative 12. Okay, I think that's negative 15. And if I made a mistake, just be polite and, you know, follow the method, not the mistakes. Uh, now, in the next one, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, see, there's a mistake. That was y1 that I was calculating there. Okay, y1 uses the values of x1, which is negative 4. y2 uses the values of x2, which is 5. Okay, so first let's get a marker on these. So we don't lose those. Now this is negative 2 times 5 squared minus 5 times 5 minus 3, which equals, uh, well, now I'm not going to do that in my head. That's getting a little big. Negative 50 minus 25 minus 3, okay, negative 75, uh, negative 78 or something like that. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we just have to take these numbers and put them into our equation for slope. So my slope, my average rate of change, is y2, negative 78, minus y1, negative 15, divided by x2, 5, minus x1, negative 4. So negative 78 minus negative 15 is going to be negative 63. And 5 minus negative 4 is 9. That looks like negative 7. Okay, it won't always be a nice round number, but sometimes it is. Okay, so that is our final answer. We would say uh, the slope equals negative 7. Now, we're going to take the same exact idea and do this one. The only reason I'm repeating myself with doing another example is because fractions get a little more difficult. So if you want some help working through this one, here we are. But if you think you got the concept, great. You, you're good to go. So... Um, same idea as before, x1 equals 3, x2 equals 5. Now, if x1 equals 3, then y1 equals negative 1 over 3 times 3 plus 4, which is negative 1 over uh, 13, I think. And y2 equals negative 1 over 3 times 5 plus 4, which is negative 1 over 19. Great. So now we plug these into our formula for m. Right? The slope, or average rate of change, is going to be equal to negative 1 over 19 minus negative 1 over 13, all divided by uh, x2 minus x1. Okay. Well, it's, it's a compound fraction. We've dealt with these before. And let's try to clean some stuff up here. I'm going to have to do some, some things, so bear with me. Uh, if you remember how to clear denominators in a compound fraction first, first what I would like to do is just simplify this a little bit. It's 1 over 13 
minus 1 over 19 on top, and it's divided by 2 on the bottom. Okay? So let's, let's uh, go ahead and do that. I'm going to clear denominators by multiplying this by 13 and 19 over 13 and 19. Okay? That's my fancy one or my crazy one that I'm going to use to cancel everything out on top. And what that leaves you with on top is 19 minus 13. You can go through the math if you're interested, right? 13 cancels out the 1 over 13 there and so on. Um, and on the bottom, we have 2 times 13 times 19. So this equals 6 over... So I'm not doing that in my head. Hold on. 2 times 13 times 19. Great. 6 over 494, which I will not bother to reduce. You can just enter it that way. 